Hey, Ian, Ian, guys, hey, where are you? Is that you, Andrew? Yeah. Hey, uh, did, like, Buck and Decker leave or something? Yeah, Buck and Decker, they're on the river. Oh, they got married to the woods and river and and stuff, right? That is pretty much exactly what happened. Ah, man, I was hoping to go to E3 with them. Well, they left the day before E3 started. Well... Would you like to come? I mean, come to think of it, I really didn't like to go with them anyway, so... Well, sure, I would love to fill in their their shoes. This is the Nexus Special, episode 39, E3 2015, on Thursday, June 18th, 2015. And now, throw down the gauntlet. This Nexus Special is hosted by Andrew Bailey and Ryan Rampersad. So, uh, yeah, big show? Uh, yeah, pretty big show. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, like, so big. Like, I watched some of these press conferences live, and, like, I had to move my bedtime back a little bit. They were, like, so huge. And, like, this year, for the first time ever, it seems like, they're actually substantial. I don't know if I believe that. Well, then again, I play maybe a little few more games and ecosystems than you i believe that is true so no unfortunately we're not actually covering this live or anything so i guess you could probably call this like more of a uh reaction by cynics to all the e3 stuff right and and by extension i think that fits my role in pretty much any show that i'm in now perfectly (laughs) so uh Yes, yeah, so just as a recap, what have you actually been playing in the past, say, year? Um, so actually, it's funny you ask, in the past day I've been playing Portal 2. Yeah, I saw that you bought that on Steam. Uh, there's some kind of Steam sale thing going on right yeah. now, and yeah. the game was like $5, and it's like, oh yeah, I'll play that. So, uh, how are you liking it? Oh, it's a lot of fun. I think I'm like 20 minutes from finishing the game. Cool. Yeah. So... So, uh, have you gone back in time yet? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. okay. So, uh, uh, how are you liking it compared to the first one? Uh, it seems pretty much, you know, in terms of the puzzles and stuff, it seems like a logical progression of mechanics. And as far as all the voice acting and character stuff goes, it seems pretty good. A lot more talking, so that's fine with me. Yeah. The thing about that is if I could put... Wheatley on a stake and just leave him there, I would. Oh, yeah. And that was even before he got the way he was. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm just walking through here. I'm just trying to solve this puzzle here. And you keep talking to me. All the time. So, yeah, there's that. So, uh, meanwhile, I am still trying to make my way through The Witcher 3. How is that? That is a glorious waste of time and i am enjoying every minute of it huh now so tell me what kind of game that really is it's it's rpg style or not yes yes it is you know sort of like your you know i wouldn't say standard fantasy it's you know you, you know your sword and magic uh gameplay uh also this is set in a world that emphasizes gray choices mm-hmm. so and it gets pretty dark at times uh so you are faced with the choice of who gets to live and who gets to die a lot and in many times it's everyone dies (laughs) so uh yeah it's it's very dark and i love it that sounds pretty good so yeah i saw a lot of people playing it and reviewing it and liking it yes And, uh, you know, I think it kind of falls into the Mass Effect problem where, like, the second chapter, like, the second game, Mm -hmm. uh, like, I wasn't really sure how that fit in too well. Like, how it cohesively ties in with the other two. Uh, But, yeah, there is uh, some very serious stuff going on in the number three, so. Yeah, I might play that, you know, sometime in the next 50 years. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it might actually take me that long to finish it. Oh, that sounds good. So... Yeah, hey, uh, so yeah, let's talk about E3. Well, before we talk about E3, where could we find the show notes about E3? 
Oh, well, that's a very good question. Uh, we can you can go and uh, see some of these show notes and a lot of these YouTube videos because there are a lot of video you know with all this stuff at thenexus.tv slash ns39. See how good that is? Hmm, so good. Yes. So, yeah, I have to remind myself that this is not quite like my own show. No, it is not. Similar. So, uh, let's start uh, even before E3 on Sunday. Uh, Bethesda had their press conference. Uh, so, this was, uh, uh, you know, like... Sh- you know, like, like all of these, they were streamed out on Twitch and like a lot of other places. Yep. Uh, so, you know, because, uh, well, because of the innuendo show slash 8-bit uh, not uh, being on the air for a while, they haven't not, they have not mentioned uh, the existence of Fallout 4 yet. No, they have not. They let, they dropped the ball completely. Although if you, although if you listen to my show, everyone would know. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, you know, Pretty much everyone was watching this uh, for Fallout 4. Uh, bef- but before they got to that, they were talking about Doom, uh, not Doom 3, but like the actual next Doom. I think it'd be the fourth one. Uh, so, you know, it's, you know, your same setup. You know, you go to this Martian base and it's filled with demons warping in from hell. And they've actually showed off some levels where you actually go to hell, uh, like in the literal sense. Uh, and you know, there's plenty of, uh, like chainsawing and dismemberment and, uh, you know, it's all good and fun stuff, you know? And then after that, they, uh, revealed Dishonored 2, uh, which was actually revealed act by accident, like the day before. Uh, but it, uh, I think the gist of that is now there's two protagonists, the one from last time and a new one. And I'm not exactly sure if you can like switch between the two or if you just have to choose one and stick with them. Uh, but you know, I haven't played the original Dishonored, but uh, from what I can tell, everyone loved it. And it looks like everyone's going nuts over this one, too. Well, the cutscene looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, so they mentioned something about a Elder Scrolls collectible card game. Uh, along with uh, like their next expansion to Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, but then uh, they, you know, showed off Fallout 4 and every good thing with that. And, uh, you know, they showed off, you know, some of the interface for that, like how uh, you would, like, design the character, which, you know, there's no more sliders. You just, like, move the nose around or something. Yeah. So uh, hopefully it'll be, like, a more natural thing. Uh, and as suspected from the trailer... Uh, the protagonist will be speaking in this game. Uh, this is a massive break from the previous Fallout games in which you know the uh, protagonist is just silent and has only a uh, you know handful of dialogue options to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's uh, there's that, and then they you know showed uh, you gathering up like all the crap that's been lying around. Uh, Stand by for uh, thunderstorm. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you go around gathering up all this crap, you know, like you do in Bethesda games. And uh, but this time you can actually build more things with it, or actually build things at all. And you know they you know demonstrated you know like building a generator and putting some lights and some turrets around everywhere. And you can essentially just play Sim City in Fallout. That might be more uh, so, fun, honestly, than SimCity. Yeah, so you, know, you can actually like build, you know, like actual uh, structures and you know buildings and forts. Uh, so uh, that will be pretty interesting, and I can just imagine people playing Fallout Four and not even just ignoring the story and just like playing, you know, the you know the base simulation, you know, the SimCity part of it. Mm-hmm. And they also mentioned that uh, you can build several cities and have Brahmin caravans running between them. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And then uh, they also uh, mentioned something about uh, Fallout Shelter, which is their iOS game, which you know pretty much puts you in, I guess, uh, Sim Vault, I guess. Uh, where you know you manage like all the people in your vault and you know the resources there, mm-hmm. and it's apparently a free iOS game, uh, and like it's actual free, like 
you know, they don't pressure you into like paying to speed up things or anything. It's just something that they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, along with, uh, you know, like cell phones and stuff, they actually have in, believe it's in their collector's edition that they have a, a plastic, you know, actual real pip boy that you can just slide your phone on into. That's cool. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, Todd Howard, you know, said, you know, as far as, you know, like gimmicks go, this is the best I've seen so far. Of course. Uh, that That is a direct quote. <laughs> So, um, uh, so yeah, everyone just went bonkers over that and they sold out immediately. Uh, and, you, but you can, you know, pretty much pre-order it on steam, you know, the regular digital game on steam for 60 bucks. And I will probably be doing that pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And so did uh, they say when that comes out? They did. It'll be coming out on November 10th. Uh, so the, uh, like I remember like all the previous Bethesda games, they announced it or at least like released the trailer about a year before. Mm-hmm. So this is like pretty, uh, quick for them. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, let's like move on to Microsoft. Oh, okay. Microsoft. So, uh, you know, so anyways, Bethesda just threw down the gauntlet and said, try to beat that. Uh, so did Microsoft beat them? No, no. Um, but they, uh, you know, tried to anyway, and uh, they announced Xbox 360 game compatibility with Xbone, which is uh, pretty they, cool. Yeah, they uh, said about a hundred titles by the end of the year. Yeah, so I think and... right now at launch, well, at soft beta launch for some people, there's 24 games that you can do it with, and uh, I guess a hundred games by the end of the year. That's not too bad. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is not, you know, like full blown Xbox compatibility. No. So the way it allegedly works is uh, the publisher or whoever makes the games, they have to tell Microsoft that they're okay with this happening, I guess. Um, And then if you are one of those lucky people who has a game that you want to play and it's actually available for this, you can put your disc in, and I guess that just is there to sh- ensure that you own the game. Yeah. And then it will download the actual game, then and it'll emulate it on your computer or your Xbox One. Yeah, so, and I believe if you just have, like, the, uh, like, something from Xbox Live Arcade, yep. that, you know, it'll just, like, download, and you can play it like that. Right. Um. So it doesn't seem like it's actual full blown emulation. It seems more like a uh, recompiled binary. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm okay with it either way. Yeah, it it's probably for the best because you know, like the 360 is just uh, like so recent and so fast that you know emulating it w- would be uh, you know like a very challenge. Yeah. Well, I mean. Like Sony, their their angle is just to have their, uh, um, you know, PS3s up in the cloud and then just stream them down. This might be better than that. So they also, uh, Microsoft also announced a new controller. Yes, this is a very strange controller. Yeah, so, but apparently it does have, uh, like, standard headphone jacks on it. So what's the special part about this controller? Uh, well, I'm not sure, uh, but it costs $150. So I think, it kind of, I, I think the price is the most special part, really. Yeah, it kind of feels overpriced just by that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it apparently it's more sturdy, I guess. So, <laughs> what Microsoft apparently is trying to sell here is that you can customize it somehow, you can change the buttons somehow, like. There's this weird little square circular button thing, and you can take it off and put like a regular directional D-pad kind of thing on it, and you can change the joystick nubs. Okay. And I mean, I don't know why that's good for anybody, but maybe it is. Yeah, I mean, if it bothers you so much, I mean, crap. <laughs> yeah, use a mouse and a keyboard. Hmm. So apparently, they also showed off some of Halo Five. Yeah, you know, everybody loves Halo. Yeah, 
So I guess we'll be uh, talking about that a little bit later, at least uh, uh, Microsoft in another press conference anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you could call it a press conference. Maybe. So apparently uh, also Minecraft is something else that uh, Microsoft has now. They own that now, yeah. Yeah. So it'll also be coming to the HoloLens, uh, which is their not virtual reality thing. It's their windowed uh, reality. And enhanced reality, I think. Augmented reality. There. There we go. Yeah. See, you know, it, it'd be nice if, like, some podcast could tell me such things. I, I, I don't know what podcast could possibly tell you. So, and uh, it didn't actually break until later. Uh, but apparently Fallout 4 mods will be able to be played on Xbone. Uh, this, you know, these are just the PC mods that, uh, you know, everyone's been enjoying on PC since ever. I think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. And they'll be coming over to Xbox. So, and, uh, you know, before everyone gets mad about the, uh, like the Skyrim paid mod situation, uh, they learned pretty fast. They're not going to be doing that. No pitchforks. They're the free mods. It's okay. Yes. That's good. So, uh, yeah, is there anything else here? Mm, I think that's about it. So, yeah, they really didn't throw down the gauntlet. You know, Microsoft, they're, you know, it's, uh, they don't have any new hardware to talk about. They don't really have any new software to talk about. They're just letting the games, you know, play for them. Yep. So, uh, let's go on to EA. Um, they announced a few things like, uh, like the next Mirror's Edge, which is apparently a prequel. Hmm. Uh, but apparently, you know, what most people were hanging around for was uh, news on the next Mass Effect. Uh, so apparently it's going to be titled Mass Effect Andromeda. And as the title alludes, it is set in the Andromeda galaxy. So that's a convenient cop out for anything that may have happened in the uh, previous trilogy. So I'm not I'm not very familiar with Mass Effect. So is there an easy way in that series to get to the other galaxies? Uh, not really, unless there was a uh, hidden relay somewhere that went elsewhere. I see. Uh, because like the whole point of that game was you know the the large world slash universe ending machines uh, were hanging around in intergalactic space. Outside so that galaxies. that may have uh, messed a few things up uh, before. Mm-hmm. So, but then again, supposedly, spoiler alert, they made everything. So who knows? Yeah, nobody knows. Uh, so the uh, trailer uh, to this, they actually released a trailer for Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, it is suggestive of a space western. So it just shows like some character just, you know, like scrolling through uh, pretty much like, you know, webcam footage of, you know, like various planets. Mm -hmm. So but uh, very vague. Uh, No announce date either. Eh, 2016. Yeah, maybe. Uh, So uh, let's move on here to Ubisoft, uh, a.k.a. the Francophone EA. And uh, I watched this, and I really didn't get excited for anything. Uh, like, I saw some dancing. I saw some stuff for the new uh, Assassin's Creed. Apparently, apparently, it's going to be set in London in around 1865 or so. Uh, sort so, of modern. Yeah, yes, sort of getting there, but not, like, now modern. No. Uh, I mean, if they, get, if they get too modern, it'll be Fallout. <laughs> Uh, well, that's not exactly established yet. Probably uh, not. I mean, you know, I really loved, uh, Fallout 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, really? And, and, uh, like a lot of people have been, you know, speculating, oh, they should, you know, do like a Far Cry 4 Blood Dragon. Indeed. And I'm like, and, you know, I'm like, no, they should do a Blood Dragon for like other, uh, other series. Definitely. If they d- if they did a Assassin's Creed Blood Dragon... It'd be hilarious. It would be the one everyone's waiting for. Yeah, pretty much, actually. <laughs> so, um, let's see. And then, you know, I, you know with the uh, Ubisoft uh, conference, you know, there is a, uh, you know, a lot of dancing in that. And uh, let's see. The annoying yeah. lady was in that conference, right? 
Yeah. Oh, um, she is the most awkward host presenter person of all of E3. Yeah, and she tried to hit on a guy talking, and she was like talking about rickets. Oh my! Really? Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go on here to Sony. Oh, Sony, they're good, right? Yeah. So uh, a lot of stuff happened. So uh, you know, with uh, you know last year's E3, they're really uh, talking up about Destiny. Yeah, it's their uh it's it's kind of their platform's MMO sort of. Yeah. Well, yeah, shared MMO that is. Yeah, well, you know, it's best on Sony's platform. Yeah. Right? Um so they were talking about the uh, new Destiny expansion. Something which... about a Taken King. I don't I don't know the details behind Destiny really. Yeah, uh people I know play Destiny and they kind of stopped and started playing other games. I guess it wasn't that compelling. Yeah, that's what I've heard too, and that's what I'm guessing the expansion will bring. Same game, same boring. So uh, then there is this little known game called Shinmu 3, and, uh, well, the Shinmu series anyway, and, you know, Shinmu 3 is a game that, you know, some people have been wanting for a while. Uh, so the... You know, they decided to go on Kickstarter and do it. And, and now uh, they went on Kickstarter. They announced yeah. it during the presentation, and they and were kick- only asking for two million dollars. And Kickstarter immediately crashed. Oops. So I, so I heard. But uh, I'd say that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're about approximately three point three million. Yeah, so far, which, and it's been which, like a day and a half. Yeah, which is what's over seventy percent of what they asked for. Right. So a hundred and seventy percent. And you can like, imagine in thirty days or you know, twenty eight days from now, they'll have even more. Yes. I don't think they're gonna be doing stretch goals or anything weird. So uh Sony uh also picked up that gauntlet that Bethesda threw down and said, you know, all all the stuff that's happening is great. Uh, but backwards compatibility, you say? Well, we're remaking Final Fantasy VII. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, pretty much, you know, bat down the hatches. Uh, the internet is exploding right now. Get ready for the uh, fallout. <laughs> yeah. But, um, psh. Yeah. So uh, Final Fantasy VII is a pretty big deal. You know, people have been asking for this for literally forever. Yes. Uh, you know, this is the game that everyone's been wanting them to remake. Uh, I guess they're they may be desperate for money at this point. <laughs> you know, and do you know why they're desperate for money? Because they waited fifteen years to make Final Fantasy fifteen. Oh, um, wait. Hmm. well. Also, I think it's interesting that if you recall, a few years ago they showed some, you know, sort of cinematic renderings from you know either the PS3 or the PS4, and to, you know to show how was, yes. how powerful yes. it was. PS3, yeah. I think that yeah, was. Yeah, I think so. And so it was this is, Final you know, Fantasy be... VII looking like content. And it's like, no, it's t- just a visual demo, nothing to do with the game. Go away. So, yeah, the uh, yeah, this is you know a complete remake. This is not like a spinoff or anything. This is apparently the actual thing. Well, we'll see about that. You know, who knows and, what you have to change in order to make it a new game. And then Sony took that gauntlet and lit it on fire uh, because, you know, like everyone's been wondering about The Last Guardian. Well, after waiting about a decade, you'll be shouting at the next at The Last Guardian next year. One more year, huh? Yeah. So this, you know, everyone's been wondering what the next Team Ico game is going to be. Uh, They, you know, put out a trailer like back when the PS3 started you know, was a thing yep. like when it first became a thing, they did this and they've been silent on it ever since. So, yeah. So, so who's, who's, who's holding the gauntlet now? Well, Sony, uh, you know, pretty much ran away with it and stole it pretty much. Okay. Just making sure, but you know, who didn't even approach the gauntlet? Nintendo. Nintendo didn't even try to get near the gauntlet. Instead, they had puppets. So, so so it was it was um Miyoshi's son on the 64th floor as a puppet, right? I guess. Yeah, I think so, something like that. Yeah. 
Uh, so they're, you know, Nintendo is just being Nintendo, uh, aside from, uh, Star Fox Zero, which is like a star, f- like, I'm not exactly sure, like, if that's a prequel or not, but, you know, aside from that, nothing big happened. Um, they showed some games on presumably the Wii U and on the 3DS, 3DS. N- yeah. neither of which were interesting things to see. They did not show Pokemon games, which means they might not have one, which means very sad things. So um, I I saw that they showed some Amiibo, which... Is uh, there an NFC I, thing, I think? Yeah, which from what I heard was like all the Amiibo on that desk was like the world supply. Uh, apparently they're very difficult to find. That's a pretty so. dire thing, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I've I've heard people just like swearing off these things, even though like they're stressed that, you know, it expands gameplay so much. It doesn't. So uh anyways, uh PC uh finally had a press conference. All of their own. Yes. But it was a so, little bit of a different kind of style conference. Yes, very different. So instead of like your boring corporate meeting type of thing it was more of a tv talk show format yep uh so you know if you have like three and a half hours to spare and you're a diehard pc uh gamer uh it's well worth your time to watch this three and a half hour thing uh so uh amd uh let's see i think it was right in the middle that the ceo of amd i believe lisa sue yep uh, came out and uh, introduced the uh, Fury cards, or at least talked about them. So the Radeon Fury cards are the uh, ones with the high bandwidth memory. Uh, I've talked about this on my own show, Control Structure, in the past. Uh, that's, you know, they they are making memory, like, pretty much right on the GPU die. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you remove the heat sink you'll see like the shiny GPU, then like four other shiny pieces beside that. And that's actual the RAM. Uh, So uh, with this, the cards can be much smaller. Uh, So they uh, also debuted a dual uh, high bandwidth memory card. So one with two GPUs on it. And they also had, I believe it was Project Quantum, uh, which... I don't know, it's like sort of like a very customized, uh, you know, box that had, I think, two of those GPUs in it. So it was like very, very small and compact uh, machine. Uh, So I believe something pertaining to you uh, came up. Yeah, there was uh, there was this guy called Colin. I think he works at ArenaNet. That's who makes Guild Wars. Uh, they talked about guilds for about four minutes, and then he said that pre-orders were available and to go buy it, and then he left. So, which, you know, pretty much all of the uh, attendees to this uh, PC gaming show, you know, they pretty much stepped on the stage and talked for maybe ten minutes and left. So... Yeah, so the, 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 the Guild Wars thing, um, basically in the last six months since... Uh, January, we've been having no new content in the game because they're preparing for their big expansion sometime later this year. We were all told earlier in the year that in order to play the expansion, you need to have the game already, you know? Like, that's fine. Yeah, big surprise. Big surprise. Well, in honor of that, ArenaNet decided to make the game $10 multiple times during weekend sales. And uh, for the most part, it's been around $20 to $25 on Amazon pretty much the whole time anyway. Well, when they put up this pre-order thing, they basically made the expansion and the game together $50. So if you would just purchase the game, for example, you know, like a week ago or two weeks ago, well, you're screwed now because you have to go and pay $50 to get the expansion. So how much is the expansion alone? There is no expansion alone. Well, considering you already have Guild Wars 2, how much would the expansion be? There is no option for that. How much should it be? Well, it should be less than $50. So it's impossible to get this without buying another license for Guild Wars 2. Right, but you won't get another license for Guild Wars 2 if you get Heart of Thorns because you'd have to make it a separate account anyway. So you either upgrade hmm. only or you make a new account with both. 
So Hmm. in other words, they did it wrong. Sounds like it. So on Reddit yesterday, the most uh, upvoted thing on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit ever was don't buy the pre-purchase of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns. (laughs) So, so much for that. So uh, I believe the gist of this is that you'll be able to go into like some sort of map and like kill the boss inside of it and that becomes your guild's home. Yeah, that that's what they showed during the, you know, four minute time he was sitting there. And that's kinda cool. We haven't had guild hall since Guild Wars One, so I guess it's nice to have it now. So has that been a handicap? Uh so for example, there's something called guild missions in Guild Wars Two. Uh it's where your entire guild can go do th- fun things together. There are times when you might, um, you know, somebody might be playing on a new character, or maybe they're just, you know, new, somewhat new to the game, and they don't have the entire game's map explored. Well, with the new system, you'll be able to collectively, as an entire guild, jump in a portal, and you'll get put somewhere near the activity that you need to do, so the person, or any number of people, don't have to go run to it by hand. And that's kind of nice, because then people can stay together and play together. Good. Yeah. So, uh, let's see, one of the other guys uh, you might have heard of, uh, Cliff Blazin- Blazinski. It's a good name. Yes, uh, he was formerly the guy at Epic Games, and you know he's you know sort of like the brains behind uh, Unreal Tournament and Guild Gears of War. Yes, Guild of, Guild of War. Yes. Why is that not a game title? I don't know. It should be. <laughs> so. Uh, he uh, he's since you know uh, after like the whole thing of uh, Gears of War being sold to Microsoft, he decided to you know like retire from the games industry and whatnot. And he was like sort of explaining his story there that that lasted only six months and he got really bored. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he decided to you know make a new company and uh, you know he you know came back and surprised he's making another shooter. And he says that PC is the only way to go for first-person shooters. I think that makes a lot of sense. I agree with him. Yes. So uh, welcome back, Cliffy. Uh, glad to have you back. I don't know how anybody, any person, could ever use an Xbox controller to do anything with their hands. Well, it's just, a club. Just say that to the millions of people who obsess over Halo. Uh, also, the those same people who just bought the $150 Xbox controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh from the makers of euro truck simulator comes american truck simulator wow so you know uh this is not one of those joke simulator games like i've heard that these are actually legitimately well made so um so it's see. literally just driving down a highway in a truck pretty much yeah okay and- it's not driving it's trucking okay i get it and and people like obsess over these things. It's amazing. That's kind of cool. Don't, I don't understand it, but hey, I really don't care. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so uh, surprise appearance. Well, sort of. If they hadn't actually said that they would be there, uh, but Blizzard, uh, f- two guys from Blizzard came by and uh, talked about uh, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, a little bit about Hearthstone and a little bit about uh, StarCraft II Legacy of the Void, uh, which I'm really interested in StarCraft II. So uh, they mentioned that the open beta, or at least some beta, for this will happen in July. So this is another expansion, right? Uh, sort of expansion. It's uh, It adds on the Protoss missions to the campaign and you know tweaks units a little bit. So... Uh, you know, they uh, they mentioned that they, uh, at least previously, that they didn't want to alienate too many people with all, like all of these. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm a StarCraft fanboy, so I'm just going to buy this and uh, be happy. Seems reasonable. So uh, uh, they also announced that there will be a sort of small prologue campaign uh, that sort of bridges the gap between the last expansion, Heart of the Swarm. And this one, so and they mentioned that would be free, uh, and they also mentioned it like right beside the beta. So I'm not sure if this, like, will when this will be released, whether you know you'd get it early with the beta or what. 
but yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. There was also some Arma three guys there. Uh, They showed off a little bit of that and the uh, new terrain type, which is uh, like Pacific islands, like tropical Pacific islands. Uh, Let's see. Um, So, yeah. And also a weird uh, show up there was, uh, I believe it was Phil Spencer, the uh, head of Xbox. Oh, really? So, uh, you know, there was the usual platitudes of, you know, yeah, we sort of like dropped the ball on, uh, you know, Windows and PC. Uh, but uh, apparently Killer Instinct is going to be uh, coming to PC, as will Gears of War Ultimate, uh, which is the, uh, I believe it's the Ge- uh, Gears of War 1 remake. There's too many G-named games here. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know... He's announcing that, and I'm like, what about Halo? You know, like, didn't you just release a Master Chief collection or something? Pretty much. It'd be really great if you brought that over to PC. Finally. Because because we haven't had one in, like, ten years. A little bit. So, and I have threatened to buy that if it does come out on PC. I would uh, probably partake in that also. I was pretty big fan of Halo 1. Uh, Halo 2 was not uh, optimized for a computer. It was well, it, a, it, it was a pretty rough port of you, the Xbox version. You mean aside from requiring Vista? That also was a problem. So not for me, for for it. So then, uh, also, let's not forget uh, No Man's Sky. Oh, uh, that that will also be coming to PC along with uh, PS4. Oh, it's also PC. That's good. I did not know yes. that. So, uh, you know, he showed off a little bit of that. Yeah, he showed, um, he was flying around, he tried, he picked a random planet, allegedly, and Mm -hmm. he, um, walked around some trees, I guess, and then hit a button and something happened. I don't know. It was cool. I don't know. We'll see if the game's actually fun in real life when somebody actually plays it for more than 15 minutes. Yes. And my bet's on Star Citizen. Yeah. So, speaking of, Cloud Imperium Games was supposed to be there. But it was really just a video of Chris Roberts in a motion capture studio saying, yeah, we're working on this. See you next year. Hmm. Um, let's see. Then also speaking about PS4 ports, I guess, the, that Shenmue 3 game that yep. we talked about earlier, that will also be on PC. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. You know, it's pretty nice that all of these modern platforms are not equivalent, but, you know, they're basically computers at this point that don't suck, so it's easier to make well, them across platforms. I wouldn't say that they don't suck. They don't suck as much as they used to. Well, yeah. Like, it's not like you have to develop for the emotion engine now. So, and, you know, at least we're in the next gen. Yeah. Let's just say that. Right. And, yes, I will be calling the Xbox One and the PS4 next gen until there is something to replace them. That is perfectly reasonable. Since, like, all this terminology is so vague anyway. Because that Wii U isn't even a gen. It's not even a joke. Oh, it's sort of between. It's uh, a problem. I mean, when that thing came out, I was sort of impressed. Like, this is, like, so much, you know, faster than a 360. Yeah, well, that lived uh, in its uh, throne room for about 40 minutes. (laughs) <laughs> something like that yeah so so we have we've established who hells who holds the gauntlet still right uh yeah pretty much sony okay so sony won this year um at least from the general consensus well, that's good uh but i really don't care uh in what so today's the 18th or so yeah so da 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 in about five months, I'm going to be walking in an irradiated wasteland, and I won't give a crap. Exactly. Uh, and uh, by then, uh, maybe uh, the single-player uh, Star Citizen stuff will be out, at least some of it. Uh, so I might be playing that, too. So I'll, I will also be getting my space fix. Well, so you have to watch out in space, because there's radiation in space, too. Yes, and there may be... Uh, like other civilizations who have nuked themselves into oblivion that don't exist anymore. So just like, watch out. Like there's actually a legit theory that states that like no civilization can advance beyond a certain point without killing each other. Yep, I've read about that theory. 
So uh, who knows? So at least there's plenty of lore already out there for Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. So uh, anything interest you here aside from maybe the Guild Wars? Uh, you know, I, I'm uh, kind of disappointed. Like, I could tell you what I didn't see, and I didn't see what I didn't like. How about that? Sure, let's see what you didn't see and didn't like. Well, so I kind of wanted Sony to talk more about their, you know, sort of virtualized streaming platform. They were making noise about this last year, and uh, this year they're not really talking about it for some reason, which makes you wonder, did it work out or didn't it work out? I don't know. Is that important? Mm, maybe not because like I've actually uh, like read about like actual like game purchases from the PlayStation Store that's actually like in the cloud, and from what I heard, it works okay. So um, your mileage may vary, I guess. And then it was kind of sad to see Nintendo not actually talk about any of their you know platform alternative plans. Because clearly, their only good platform is the 3DS, or whatever they call that these days. Their mm -hmm. Wii U is not so great these days. So, you know, the thing about Nintendo is that with, uh, like, all tech companies that were uh, extremely successful in the past, they have somehow acquired a large amount of money. Uh and I've seen calculations that even at their current burn rate, they'll last for a few decades. That's amazing, and so they can think probably, that we... They will probably be like this for about the next 20, maybe 30 years. It is such a shame, but I'm going to be saying the same thing for those 20 years that wears all the good stuff. Uh, so, uh, in in the meanwhile, they might just say, you know, forget about the rest of the world, we're Japan only. Uh, well, no, uh, clearly it's going to be Star Fox 1, 2, 3, 57, 84... 111 and so on etc yeah um that's all i really can say about you know everybody here i don't know i think everything was uh normal for e3 uh you know in the years we're not getting big platform changes in terms of hardware there's not much for me well, to say I'd, I'd say that this was pretty big uh you know between what sony did and uh bethesda having their press conference uh you know it's it's actually quite useful i'd say I mean, sure, that they were kind of duds like, you know, Nintendo and Ubisoft, even. There's always a dud. And, you know, a lot of these... Uh... And apparently Square Enix had a press conference, but it was so boring <laughs> that no one really cared. That's right. Um, well, you know, it's kind of like um, CES used to be, or is, I guess, still. Uh, big vendors used to go there and talk about all of their cool stuff for the entire year in, in one conference. But now they have their own press conferences throughout the year, multiple times a year. And so yeah. I think there's a lot more of that even in the gaming industry too. So sure there could be there could have been bigger E3s. So all that's left at CES is the Internet of Things with 4K OLEDs. Basically each pixel has its own Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> so uh yeah, I'd say that's about it. Yeah, I think we'll be looking forward to next year's E3. So uh have a good one. Have a good one.